welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ev. I'm so happy to have you guys here today. Today is Knits and Babbles. I forget which episode we're at, but today's Knits and Babbles is all about August. Everything we knit during the month of August. Before we hop into today's finished knits, I want to talk to you guys about what I'm wearing today. I am actually wearing my November jacket. So this is a pattern that we knit up last winter over the Christmas break and then into February. I finished it for Valentine's Day, which I thought was cute because it's pink. It's peachy, peachy pink. So this is a yarn kit that I had bought for the no frill sweater, but I ended up purchasing an extra skein. This yarn is from Tofino Knit Company. So this was a mohair and a fingering weight and it took really really long because it is brioche stitch. I always I always feel like a sha 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 when I say that. And I took it out because here in Vancouver it's a little bit chilly, so that means fall is coming. I can finally take out my fall wardrobe, which we will do soon together. But so let's hop right into the finished products. The first thing I want to share with you guys is my Friday tea. So this is the tea. We finished knitting it a week ago. It is washed and blocked and has been worn many, many times already. I really, really like this knit. I absolutely love the way that the wool and silk mix together. And uh, I think the light blue was a super wash merino and silk and it is a much thinner yarn but i do love the way that the stripes ended up looking they are i think a little bit thinner than they're supposed to be but honestly i love it this is possibly one of my favorite knits that i've knit up this year i've been yeah wearing it so much so the difference i did from the pattern the original one is i think from the armpit for the small she had 14 rows of stripes she had a 14 stripe sweater I made it 13 but then I did the two inch rib at the bottom and then the sleeves and everything else is basically following the pattern so this is a pattern by petite knit it is the Friday tee and at the same time when we knit this up we also knit up the Sunday tee it was kind of like a challenge to see if I can knit them both up at the same time kind of flopped but if you guys haven't checked out that video I highly recommend you do because we went through so many challenges it was a tough one. If you guys did watch that video, you will know that I accidentally made a mistake in the pattern at the very, very beginning again after restarting it. For now, I think I'm just gonna keep it as is. So the mistake is that I knit one row too many before doing the first stripe. So my stripe is inside out. So on the inside of the sweater, this is how the stripe looks. And on the outside, this is how the stripe looks. But for some weird reason, I don't know how I knit an extra row of the white, which then made me pick up on the wrong side for the stripe. I did get a, quite a few recommendations of people. I'm not too sure if I'm going to do it just yet, just because I'm scared. But if I do decide to do it, I will for sure make a video about it. We will put a safety line on both sides of the row of the stripe cut redo the stripe color, stitch it back together, and hopefully the safety lines will hold, but that is what people have recommended that I should do. As I said, I'm just, I've never done that before. I've never, it's at the top, at the collar, so if I mess it up even more, I don't know. For now, we're just gonna leave it as is. I'm really, really scared, but I do promise if I ever do decide to have the courage, if you guys overwhelmingly in the comments tell me to make a video about it and do it, I will cut and we will do surgery on my t-shirt. But for now, out of fear, I think we'll leave it as is. This is how much yarn we have left from the Friday tea. Honestly surprised that we didn't finish the cone and that I didn't need to go purchase more. I'm not entirely sure how much is left, maybe. I think I'm gonna kick it up and weigh it and then we can use it as an accent color in another project. I do have some more silk and wool kind of mixed yarns, so maybe we could use this, a nice white as an accent color or detailing or something. This was a cone that I got from Sanjo Silk, which is a local shop here on Granville Island in Vancouver. They do have a website, I will link it down below, and I honestly, this is the second time I'm knitting with this yarn. It feels super, super nice, soft, and the silk doesn't give you that like eerie, itchy, or, like mm, feeling that silk can sometimes have. The next project that I wanna to talk to you guys about is one that we've seen quite a few times here on my Knits and Babbles, my finished socks. 
So these are the Snippet Sock and they have my hair all over it. I've worn these already quite a few times and I honestly love these socks and they were a pure joy to knit up. They look super, super good. They have detailing, it's cables along the front of the sock working up along the side and then this very interesting arrow, <laughs> arrow design on the front because this is hand dyed speckled yarn one sock has a lot of yellows and green, and one sock is more purple and pink. And I actually really, really like that. I love how bright the colors are on these socks. If you guys want some really bright cotton candy, really fun unicorn colors, I highly recommend you guys check out Lillian Pine's uh, Fiber Arts. Is it Fiber Arts or Fiber Yarn? It's Lillian Pine though, yarn. But I know that this was a BFL wool, which I thought was really, really interesting. Cause I know that if you are trying to spin and become a spinner, the best yarn to try on and the most friendly for beginners is BFL wool, which I do have in my stash that I'm trying to spin, spin up. Spinach, what am I saying? Let's keep going. If you guys just watched my video from last weekend where we tested out our very first vintage knit pattern. It was a pattern from the World War II Knitting for Victories Canadian Army vintage pattern book. During the war, the Canadian Army released a pattern book for people at home to help and knit garments for veterans and people at war. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. So the pattern that I had chose to knit up is actually a lovely pair of fold over mittens. So one is still not washed and blocked because we literally just finished it and filmed it yesterday. The two mittens, this one is washed, this one isn't. So look at that size difference. This is a super wash wool, gazelle, happy feet. This is how much I have left from one skein for these two mittens. It was 330 meters, the skein. I still need to find a little button to clip onto the back. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do, if I'm just gonna do a clippy, like a snap, or if I'm gonna put an actual button with a little like loop tie. So this is the mitten right here. I actually really, really like this yarn. It worked up super, super well, and it is a pretty sturdy yarn. So the pattern called for two balls of Monarch Down. Now that is a yarn that is no longer in circuit. I had to do a little bit of googling and I found out that the Monarch Down is a light fingering weight. That is why I used a fingering sock yarn and then it called for 10 needles which is in nowadays I guess they had different sizes of needles. That is a modern three millimeter needle. The pattern is listed in that video in the description. It is a free pattern. So yeah, go check it out. Those were all the projects that we knit up in August and finished so let's head on to the current whips. Let me just finish my knit. The first whip that I am currently working on is my Moby sweater. Last spring I had talked about the sweater. We had knit it up, but since then I've kind of put it on hold and I just wasn't feeling it. So this is the old one. I really, really like this sweater and I want to have it in my wardrobe. So I decided to recast it on and restart it. So this is the restarted portion. We are at the shoulder for the left. We started it this week. So this is a one week knit. This is knit up with Drops Charisma and Drops Kid Silk Mohair. One of the modifications I made to the new one is to actually go up a needle size because Drops Charisma is a thicker strand than the required, I think it's a DK weight, which is a little bit thicker. So it resulted in a much denser material and I just felt if I went up a size, it would be a little bit more loose and airy. So that is what I did. I am currently knitting up the small, so it's gonna be a little bit of an oversized sweater, but that is what I want. And it isn't that much bigger. I measured it and it's about like half an inch bigger on both sides. So that's one inch wider. So it's not that much bigger. So I'm assuming that the whole sweater will be one inch bigger overall. I'm just going to go till my desired length for the sleeves and the body. We have the back panel started and then the shoulder. This pattern is very interesting because the way you cast it on is you cast on the stitches, break the yarn, and then push the stitches onto separate needles. You start doing the short rows like kind of in the middle. I find it weird because as soon as you cast on you break the yarn. 
I'm, I haven't seen that in many other patterns. I'm talking to a few other people who are currently knitting this one up at the same time. Everybody kind of has the same feeling, which is it's a lot of charting. You need to highlight each row that you're working at basically. It's a really fun pattern and once you get the design, you can kind of like knit it on your own, but at the same time, you lose track of how many rows you've done and like when you need to do the cable. So I advise you to highlight and take notes. I'm using my iPad and I'm highlighting as I go and mark little notes. It's a lot. <laughs> the second sweater that I'm currently working on is a pattern for my boyfriend. I don't know if I talked about this in my last Knits and Babbles. Was this one casted on? We had just split off for the sleeves last night. This is the, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh my God. It's the In Stillness sweater. I currently have the sleeves on some extra cables and I he just tried it on. So we have even more cables so that it fits around the body. This is the fifth skein of yarn. So I'm knitting it in Drops Lima. Drops Lima is a 75% wool, 35% alpaca. It is a super soft yarn and this sweater has a really nice, interesting broken stitch design along the front and the back panel up to about like the chest area. And then it's just stuck in that stitch. I think I'm gonna be stopping the body for now and just knit the collar, see how he likes it, if it works, because I'm a little bit unsure about the size of the body. So it's kind of hard to see when the collar like pulls down here. So I'm pretty sure if we do the, the ribbed collar, we'll get a better visual. I'm knitting up the large right now. I actually really, really like this sweater. I like this yarn. This is my first time using the Lima yarn and it is a pretty soft, that's pretty soft for a mainly wool fiber and it is a nice density. Uh, yeah, I'm also using US 7 needles. So right now I'm kind of knitting two projects on pretty chunky needles, more chunky than I'm typically used to. I, like for example, my mittens were knit on three millimeters. The socks was on 2.5. Friday tea was on like two, 2.5 millimeters, 2.25 I think. This one's taking me quite some time. I'm honestly surprised that this is five skeins of yarn. It doesn't look like much. However, these skeins do just run 100 meters, if I remember correctly. Like the yarn for the Moby sweater, this is all yarn that I ordered in different purchases in different times of the year from Wool Warehouse. <laughs> they were having sales. This one was the winter sale. The boyfriend sweater was recently bought for their summer sale because who knits with alpaca yarn in summer? I'm trying to really reduce how much I'm knitting to make these videos a little bit easier for me. I get very distracted when I knit on many, many things at once. It kind of gets a hard to track for video production. So we are going to be reducing how much we knit. I think I will just start my own design. It'll be the third pattern and we will keep with these three for a while till we finish them basically. And we will go adding on from there. So my own design, this brings me into my next topic, which is acquisitions. So this is my little basket <laughs> where I am keeping my Longway Homestead yarn. So Longway Homestead is a yarn company from Manitoba and a couple weeks ago we actually used some natural dyeing process to dye some yarn and this was the skeins that we dyed up. So if you guys haven't checked that out I highly recommend you do if you want to know more about hand dyeing and sun dyeing your own yarns. So this one was stovetop dyed and then these two were sun dyed yarns. One was from Onion and one was from a flower Magnoloid and then this was another flower dye but on the stove. I also signed up for a monthly subscription box. Every month they send a different fiber, a different type of fiber so you learn as a knitter, learn about sheeps and their different wools and their different fibers and how they are spun, how you can use them in uh, your knits and have a greater knowledge about yarn and fibers. I previously received two of their monthly subscription boxes and I just received the third. The third one was this lovely Tarjeet two ply sport weight. It is 285 meters. So this is the yarn. Their yarns in the yarn subscription boxes are undyed. So this is the natural, it's a lovely sheepy white wool. For wool, it doesn't feel itchy. It feels actually really, really nice on my hands. In the past, I've also received, this one is a little bit more scratchy, but it's a thicker weight. This is a border cheviot chunky three ply wool, 135 meters. And then last month we received this one, which is gorgeous. This is an Icelandic wool. This is an air and a weight, a single ply, 170 meters. We kind of have 
quite a lot of yarn and a very interesting color palette. So what I wanted to do is actually knit these all up in a color work project and make my own color work pullover. I had just, just enough yarn before with these five skeins. Now that I received this one, I think we're gonna make this one as the border yarn. So for the collar, the sleeves, the waist. I am aware that all these skeins are of different weight. So we have a chunky, a sport, an Aran, and a fingering. We're gonna be knitting them all together, kinda have like a funky textured vibe. I don't mind that they're all different weights and I'm actually really interested to see how all these yarns will work together. I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna be using this white. Um, it all depends how far this one runs. I'm hoping to kinda have like a stripe vibe going on. I did make some sketches and I will put put the sketch right here of what I'm hoping to do but I'm super super happy that my new skein for the month of August was this lovely white because it works with my color scheme. All right so it is a new day because I completely forgot about this portion it is a new segment to my knits and babbles. It is my yarn stash update. So we ended the month of yeah, we ended the month of July with 208 skeins. We actually did go down quite a lot in the month of August. Basically, we went down to 201. I think the majority of that is for the boyfriend sweater because I'm using a lot of drop slima and the skeins run kind of small. I go through them pretty quickly. The other ones was for my vintage mittens. For the Moby sweater so far, I haven't cracked into any new skeins. I'm kind of just finishing off the sweater that I previously knit up, but I am almost almost done. So hopefully soon we can start cracking into some new skeins and get this number lower. That is again with Knit City. We'll see how much damage I do. I don't anticipate buying as much as last year, but last year, I don't know what happened. The moment I got into there, it my brain just flew out of my head and I was so overwhelmed that I bought everything I saw. Because of last year's experience, I am a little bit more of an experienced shopper. <laughs> but we will see how much damage, and I'm so excited to be able to share that journey with you guys soon. Okay, so back to the knits and babbles. <laughs> but I think that is it for the month of August, and I am so happy to be rolling into fall, finally taking out my warm, cozy knits. I am curious to know what you guys are working on. Please let me know down in the description what knits you guys are excited for for the fall and what you're gonna be knitting up. And thank you so much for watching. This was a lot of fun as always. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.